Hello, AP statisticians. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Um, I am going to be going over 5.2. So this is the practice statistics, uh, fourth edition, chapter five, section two. This is the first day. There's another day. So it'll be point two. Probability models and basic rules of probability. Um, so again, a lot of this should be kind of a review. Some of it, some of it won't be. That's fine. Um, just a little bit of vocab uh, and a couple examples. So um, our SOBAT is uh, to be able to describe a probability model for a chance process and also use the basic probability rules including the complement rule and the addition rule for mutually exclusive events. Um, okay, so probability model. There are two things that you need um, for a probability model um, and that would be a list of all possible outcomes and the probability of each of those outcomes occurring. So um, the list of all possible outcomes is also known as the sample space um, and often is denoted with just a capital S. Um, a sample space um, and the probability model could be um, really, really simple. Uh, like, for example, if your event is tossing a coin, um, one time, then your list of possible outcomes is very short, right? You can either have um, the, the coin land on heads, or you can have it land on tails. So your sample space in that case would just be heads, comma, and tails. And then if you wanted to make the probability model, you would include um, the probability of each thing occurring. So the probability of it landing on heads is 0.5, and the probability of it landing on tails is also 0.5. Note that with the entire sample space, all of your probabilities should add up to one. Um, so that's a very, very, very simple probability model um, in sample space. You could also have a very, very, very complicated one, very huge as well, um, in which case you wouldn't list all of the possible outcomes, but you would describe what they are. For example, if you had a random sample of like 1,500 people, so one sample, 1,500 people, um, of a survey of all the um, millions of adults that are in the country, um, your sample space, which is the list of all possible samples of size 1,500, 1,523, um, all the possible uh, combinations of people that you could get. Um, that sample space will have 2.1 times 10 to the 8,561 different samples. So um, obviously you're not going to be listing out all of those, but you should be able to, well, not right now, but you know, be able to list ones within reason and also describe other ones uh, that might be enormous. Okay, so let's jump to the first example real quick. So imagine flipping a fair coin three times. Uh, give a probability model for this chance process, okay? Pause, try it, uh, and then I'll explain the answer in just a sec. Okay, so your sample space would be all the possible outcomes in this scenario. So you're flipping a coin three times. So possible scenarios include getting ahead the first time, ahead the second time, ahead the third time, getting three heads, head, head, head. Or you could get head, head, tail, or you could get head, tail, head, or you could get tail, head, head, or you could get head, tail, tail, or tail, head, tail, or tail, tail, head, or tail, tail, tail. I think that's all of them. Um, you end up with eight different options, okay? So that would be your sample space. Now the probability of each one of those things occurring is exactly the same as the rest of them. So um, you could just say the probability of any of these events occurring is one out of eight. Okay, so that it's pretty simple. That's your probability model. Okay, um, here's another example. Many more, uh, many board games involve rolling dice. Imagine you have a two, you have two fair six-sided dice, one red and one green. Give a probability model for this chance process. Go. Okay, so here's your sample space. There are 36 different possibilities. Um, you could have a one and a one. Or you could have a one and a two, or you could have a two and a one. Um, and then, you know, so you repeat the process, um, and there are 36 different options, and the probability of them all occurring at the same time is um, not at 
the same time. <laughs> That's impossible. But the probability of each individual event occurring um, is 1 out of 36. Um, so uh, your probability model is the list of all possible outcomes, and the probability of any each individual event um, is 1 out of 36. Okay, back to our vocab section. section. So um, P parentheses A just means the probability of A, where A is some event, some chance event. Um, and so, yeah, that's that. Okay, um, so just note that um, the, the event um, A or B or whatever you're naming your event um, is usually in caps. So just as a side note, um, complement of an event A, uh, which is denoted any of these different ways. So you can have A to like the power C, essentially A prime, uh, which is like just A with a, um, you know, what are those called? I can't remember right now. Um, or A with a bar um, over the top. All of those mean exactly the same thing. They mean it's the complement of A. And the complement of A is just not A. OK, so the probability of A prime is the probability of not getting A, um, which is just it's the same thing as 1 minus the probability of A. So um, if you want that in like formula algebra terms, you could say that the probability of A complement is equal to, or a prime, or a bar, same thing, is just equal to 1 minus the probability of a, right? Um, so like, if your event is getting ahead when you toss a coin, uh, the, prob the probability of that, the complement of that event is getting not ahead, which is a tail. So you take the probability of getting ahead and subtract it from 1, because all sample spaces um, all probability models have to add up to 1. Okay, let's skip to the next example. So uh, back to the dice situation, rolling two dice. Um, in the previous example, event A will define as rolling a sum of 5. What's the probability of A? Well, okay, you got to find all of the possible ways you could get a sum of 5. So that would be like 4 and 1 and... Uh, 2 and 3 and 3 and 2 and 4 and 1 and let's see if there's any other uh, options here. A 1 and a 5 is too much, a 1 and a 6 is too much, we have 4 and 1, 3 and 2, 2 and 3, 1 and 4. Okay, so the probability of um, me rolling a, sorry you can't really see that very well, um, so these are your four, four ways you can get a sum of 5. Um, so the probability of that happening is four possible chances uh, out of 36. Notice that I'm not reducing this to one out of nine. Um, that is for a couple of reasons, but um, when we're talking about probability, sometimes we'll end up having to add probabilities. Um, and if you have to add them, you have to have the same denominator anyways. So you might as well just keep everything out of your total number of possible outcomes um, so that your future arithmetic is easier for yourself. Um, so, cool. All right, moving on. So event B is a, a sum that is 6. What's the probability of B? Um, and then finally, let C be the sum of neither 5 or 6. What's the probability of C? So go ahead, try both of those. Um, I'll scroll up here for you so that you can see that uh, sample space, uh, go ahead and try those two problems. Okay, so there are five different ways you can get a sum of six. So that's the probability of B. Uh, so that should be five out of 36. Um, and then finally, let C be a sum of neither five or six. Okay, so the probability of neither five or six sum uh, would be everything else. So um, everything except the probability of getting a five or a six. Um, and so I could count up all the different ways to get not a 5 or 6, or I could go and I could say, all right, well, the probability of getting uh, a sum of 5 is 4 out of 36, and the probability of getting a 
sum of 6 is 5 out of 36. And so uh, the probability of getting, getting a 5 or a 6 is 9 out of 36. And then I need to do 1 minus that um, to get the complement, basically is what this is. Um, and so the probability of C is 1 minus 9 out of 36 which is, you know, you can change, again, you know, it's helpful to have um, your, uh, the denominator the same, so I might change that to 36 out of 36, minus 9 out of 36, and then that will get me uh, my total. Sorry, I had to clean that up for you. So uh, the probability of C would just be um, 27 out of 36. Okay, uh, so then that brings us to our next set of notes here. Um, which is mutually exclusive and disjoint. Um, so those are two words for the same thing. Mutually exclusive is the same thing as disjoint. Um, and all it means is that they, the two events are mutually exclusive if they have no outcomes that overlap or that are in common. So for example, the probability of rolling a sum of a five and the probability of rolling a sum of six, those are mutually exclusive because you can't both roll a sum of five and a sum of six at the same time. Um, but something like rolling a sum of five and rolling a three, not a sum of three, but just a three um, on one of the dice, uh, those are not mutually exclusive events because you could get a sum uh, of five that also has a three in it, um, like three and two, for example. Um, so those are not mutually exclusive events um, or disjoint, same, same thing. Okay, next, some basic probability rules. Hopefully these are kind of either intuitive or um, you already know them. So uh, first and foremost, any event A, um, no matter what it is, if we're talking real world situation, the probability of a, any of an event occurring, is somewhere between 0 and 1. It either it can never happen, which is the probability would be 0, um, or it always happens, which the probability would be 1. Um, so that is important. Remember, you can't have a probability that's greater than 1. Uh, you can't have a negative probability. Um, okay, probability of a sample space. So remember, your sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. So the probability of a sample space is one, right? Because you add everything up within that sample space, you get the probability of everything, it, anything happening from that sample space, the probability would be one. Um, and then the probability of any particular event occurring is the number of ways that that event could occur divided by the total possible um, outcomes uh, in a sample space. And last but not least, if you have two events that are mutually exclusive, which means, again, they have no outcomes in common, um, then the probability of one or the other happening is just the probability of the sum of the probabilities of each individual event, okay? So basically what that looks like is um, if A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A or B occurring is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. Okay, um, something also to keep in mind is just notation. Uh, you might also see this, the probability of A and then this weird cup thing. That also means or. Uh, and that is the probability of A plus the probability of B. Okay? Okay, last example. Go ahead, try this one. Um, yeah. Okay, so one... A and B are mutually exclusive because you cannot have a person with cholesterol greater than or equal to 240 at the same time as they have cholesterol less than 240. Like, that just can't happen. Uh, it's just one or the other. A or B is the event that someone has cholesterol level of um, 240 and greater or between 200 and 239, which, like, in, in layman's terms just basically means someone who has borderline high cholesterol or high cholesterol. Um, so, a uh, cholesterol level of 200 or greater. Uh, the probability of that, since it's mutually exclusive, is just 0.16 plus 0.29, which is 0.45.
and the probability of C is the complement of A or B, which is 1 minus 0.45, which is 0.55. <gasps>